Hi guys, it's Snapshot of a Soul. Uh, I've been having some computer issues lately, so I have not been doing much with it. But in the meantime, I've decided to do something I've been meaning to do forever, and that's to make a bunch of tutorials that you guys have requested. And my top two requests are set building, which I will get to. And today I am going to be doing my other most requested one, which is how do you write a realistic character? And this goes for both subtitled series and voice series, Sims 1, Sims 2, Sims 3. I have seen Sims 1 series lately and it's, it's good because <laughs> I actually, I do miss them. I remember there was a community I was part of where you could do Sims 1 stories. And I think that was really cool. So this applies to anything and it can apply to different games too. Like say you play like Second Life or something and you want to make a video with that. Uh, this could help. This could help. And um, I don't claim to be an expert. I am just, I'm just really good at English, I guess. <laughs> so um, yeah, let's get started. First, we're going to start with general appearance of the character. Um, first off, make sure that you have what they will look like in mind, but don't get too detailed if you don't want to. Just um, do what you feel comfortable with. Like if you don't want to plan out their exact facial features, if you just want to let that flow when you're in Body Shop or Create a Sim, that's perfectly fine. And when you're in Create a Sim, just go with what you feel looks right for that character. It doesn't have to match up to your personal preference. So if you express yourself in a certain style, that doesn't mean that all of your characters have to look like that. And um, if you say if you wear a lot of a certain color, not all of your sims have to wear that certain color. And that applies too to like say if they like something, not all of your sims have to like the same thing or act the same way or have the same beliefs that you do. So when they express themselves, when your characters express themselves, make sure that you keep in mind that people are diverse and people will have differing opinions. Conflict of opinion is something that we will touch on. So yes, just keep that in mind that having contradictory and somewhat controversial opinions it's a good thing for a plot line. But in a way, try to avoid cliche where you start getting like, oh, this person, they're rich and they're blonde and they wear pink all the time and they drive a convertible and they have no worries. That's a cliche. And just try to stay away from them, but don't marry Sue it. A Mary Sue is where you try to get away from the cliche, but at the same time you create your own cliche. So what Mary Suing is, is that um, it's the direct opposite of a cliche, but in the worst way possible. So to write that character, I bet you guys are wondering, well, how do you do that? And uh, my honest answer is, it all depends on what you're writing. Say if you're writing a serial killer series. I've seen a few crop up. Um, if you're writing a serial killer series and you're trying to write the main protagonist, the protagonist, for those of you who do not know, is the good or favored person. They do not have to necessarily be good. They're the favored person. And the antagonist is the opposing force, person, or entity. Which means, like, say, if the government is posing them, that would be the main antagonist. Or say, maybe a landscape is opposing them. Or something like, like something that causes them a personal challenge. That is the antagonist. So you, you really, you just gotta write from your, from your genre. And, um, I mainly do a lot of dark stuff. So it all depends on your style, like, I don't usually write characters that are happy and upbeat and have nothing wrong. I like to write people with problems. <laughs> so once you come up with like your character and the general way that they look, you gotta really just sort of refine that a bit. And what I'm gonna get into now is makeup and clothing. Makeup and clothing is a key aspect of a machinima. 
because what happens is that when you have a character, you want to make them look good, but at the same time, what if that character doesn't look good? What if they're shabby? What if they don't have a lot of money? Well, you can't have them all wearing Abercrombie. I don't even know what Abercrombie is. Anyways, um, <laughs> Walmart shopper. Um, yep, so you want to have them, like, stay within their own personal, you know, like, income range. Like, you won't have a sim that you deem poor to look totally trashed all the time. Usually they'll just have plain, simple, basic no frills added, like t-shirt, jeans, hoodies, nothing flashy, very basic, and sometimes outdated. Like you may see things that should be from a different era, but don't, unless it's part of the character, don't get too far with that. Like if you want to have a sim wearing all 50s stuff in a modern day setting, then that would be part of their character and that would be one of their choices. But if it's not a choice, like, say it's just part of, like, their income range, say they're, like, working class, then just kind of make it look like they went shopping at Salvation Army, you know? Um, with makeup, try to use it sparingly. Don't overload on it for either gender. Because when you overload on it, just think of real people. Do you ever see that? And do you ever, like, really want to see that on a person? Not really, no. Uh, try to keep it natural most of the time. Most people that I know, they don't cake it on a lot. They don't, most people I know don't even wear it. But, um, nobody wakes up with a face full of Maybelline. Like, when your sim character first wakes up, it would be better to have them have, like, tussled hair and look kind of like they just woke up, you know, like no makeup. Kinda not like they'd step out of the house. The character is not entirely just for oh look at how my how my character is so pretty blah 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 like it's not about the looks it's a big part of it but a lot of times you would do better with having characters that you can relate to and that are strong in the way that they have a personality and how they handle the plot lines rather than oh look at my pretty character Pretty characters are good, but only when used in moderation. Now for diversity and locality. Say so you're doing a series set in Japan. And I know a lot of people don't like to touch on this, but I'm just going to hit it on the head. Some people think that when you have just like all one race in a series, that's kind of racist. Um. For me, it's all circumstantial, and I don't believe that it's intentional in a lot of cases. In some cases, it is, and I have nothing to say to those people. But in the cases where it's not intentional, it just happens by like total chance, then mm, I really don't have anything to say on that either. But you know, if you're, if you're having a series, say, set in Japan or China or something like that, the big majority of your cast is going to be Asian. Or if you have a series, say, set somewhere in Africa, you're going to have African people. If your series is set somewhere in Europe, you're going to have a mix of a bunch of people. You know, just like, I have no problem with people going with, um, like, a demographic. Like, j actually, that's what I would give for an advice is go with the demographic of your setting. And with settings, my favorite thing to do is um, pick somewhere that you know but you don't know too well. Like say if that city to that, that city like two hours away from you that you've only visited a couple times in your life and set it there. And go on Google Street View and just build stuff you see. And just create a sort of setting. But you can also make fictional cities. But just kind of set it somewhere where you're slightly familiar but not really. Unless of course you're doing a series, say like set in Japan, because I have met maybe two people in my life that actually legitimately live in Japan. <laughs> um, okay, now we're getting on to general personality. Uh, five good traits, five bad traits, five neutral traits, fatal flaw. <clears throat> With good traits, this is mainly for the protagonist. Um, for the five good traits, 
you want your person to be mainly like say you have like a really sort of sporty type then a good trait would be athletic they want to get fit um maybe they're a friendly type maybe they're very neutral and they never yell there you have five traits for bad traits it's like bad habits or like tics that they have like maybe you know maybe they have a sort of thing where they always interrupt people in conversation or they bite their nails and just elaborate on that a bit and always with the good traits don't just leave it at oh they're friendly give like terms and conditions to each trait like if the person is friendly why are they so friendly is there a reason behind that is there a sort of you know there has to be a precursor to their personality and they could just be born like that or raised like that and that is a legitimate way to say oh they're friendly because they were raised to um respect other people and don't worry you can use any of my ideas i like in that i say in these guides it doesn't matter um Outside of these guides, I would prefer if you didn't. But um, here you can use whatever I say to like develop what you're doing and help with your writing. Now we get on to five neutral traits. And these traits, they don't have any real sort of effect on the person's personality. It's just sort of a development into who they are. Like maybe they have poor vision or they like to read a lot of books, but it doesn't really have any negative impact on their life. Maybe they like a certain type of music, then that would be a trait. And elaborate on why they like the music, do like, do stuff like that, list their favorites. Say like, favorite music artists, favorite bands, favorite color, favorite food, favorite book, favorite movie, just elaborate on that. And kind of like get a sense of who they are, what they like. You know, just like flesh out your character a bit that way. Because once you develop what they like, it gives them a bit more of a dynamic view onto, oh, I don't like that show. And that's where we get into what their dislikes. So maybe they hate the show like Grey's Anatomy or something. Or uh, they don't like going for walks because they think it's a like a waste of time. You know, just like stuff like that. They give them opinions. Uh, if you're really into that kind of stuff, like maybe even give them an opinion that's a bit more political. Saying like, oh, I don't think that... Um, I'm just like grasping at straws here. Maybe they have an opinion on something like the death penalty. We don't have that here, but in the States they do. And I know a lot of people are from the States. So maybe you could like elaborate on that and maybe they have an opinion on that and maybe that has some impact on your plot. Finally, in general personality, there's a fatal flaw. And this is the flaw that defines your character in the most, like, best and worst of them. Like, for example, a fatal flaw could be maybe they have an addiction. Maybe they have a mental disorder. Maybe there is something wrong with their past. Maybe it's something like... They steal a lot, or they're tempted to gamble, something like that. Something is wrong with them. Give them a problem. And don't go very cliche on that problem. Like, say you give them depression, they're not going to be crying all the time. Um, they're mostly going to be, and this is from first time experience, they're mostly going to be just kind of like listless and lifeless, and they're not going to have very much color in their lives. And they're going to be, um, like, you know, kind of flat, dull, and really bring that out in their inner thoughts. And just sort of tint everything with their glasses that they're wearing, you know. And if they see something in a bit of a darker light than somebody, elaborate on it. Say that maybe... I'm going to give them an example that I was given when I was 13. And it was two people are sitting by a river... And they're both wearing di uh, different tinted color glasses. One is red, the other is green. And they have arguments about which color the river is. Meanwhile, they go ahead, and one person who isn't wearing glasses comes up and sits in between them and says, Why don't you guys take off your glasses? The river is blue. 
So that's a difference of opinion there. And don't mix up opinion with fact. Because even though some people may be like, oh, I think that person is the murderer, they can be wrong. If you mislead a person in, like, if you mislead your viewers into a false sense of security, it's just, it's one of the best feelings in the world, trust me. Um, okay, detail personality. <sighs> cliques. I'm gonna go with, um, something that's popular with teen series writers, and that's to create cliques. I have never experienced a clique in my life. I am sorry. I don't know if it's just like a national thing that we have going on here or if it's just my area. I don't know. We just, we didn't really have cliques. Minus like sports teams. Um, with cliques, they tend to get into either the Mary Sue or the stereotypical thing. It's not wrong for characters to have best friends and people they hang out with and like different relationships with different people. Just please with cliques, use them sparingly. They get tiresome and they get very predictable where, <laughs> oh, we're going to go have a party, but you guys aren't invited. It's like, I know Mean Girls has had a lot of impact on the way that people write teen series, but there comes a time and a place for everything. And in some series, it's just the popular girl. I haven't really seen much of a popular contest anywhere, like a popularity contest. I don't know why this is. Um, I've talked to a couple people. There isn't really a popularity contest in their schools. Um, so yeah, just if you're going to do a popularity contest, don't make a big deal out of it unless it's a major part of the plot. Uh, that's just my opinion. I know other people have different opinions where um, they have different styles, but for me it just... It drives me off because it distracts from the actual plot to have all these people like divided up and stuff. I mean like sure there's groups that hang out with each other, just don't give them a label is what I'm trying to say. Um, making the character dynamic. So now you have your best friends and stuff like that and you have who hangs out with who. How do you split up those relationships? Um, for me... <laughs> What I'd like to do is I like to create a conflict where it could be maybe something that happened before the series started. I always like to start in media's res, which means I like to start right in smack in the middle of things. Like with the hundreds, it was right smack in the middle of a plot line. And you don't get to see what came before, but it's explained later. So say I'm going to use uh, my friend Mark's series that I help out with, California High. Um, <clears throat> He had a plot line where um, Molly and Lawson, um, I'm not going to spoil a lot of this for you, but if you haven't watched this, um, it's not really that big of a spoiler. Um, Molly and Lawson were together and everyone thought, oh, they're really a happy couple. It was revealed later that he did some jail time um, and then stuff goes down there. And they transfer to a new building, and they meet up with a girl named Becky. Becky turns out to be Lawson's original girlfriend. And uh, Molly stole Lawson away from Becky. This is a problem. Um, this is what I'm trying to describe here, is like, create a conflict with that. Where you have, oh, a person jumps in from the past, or oh, a person from that person's, like say like an old school or an old town maybe just shows up one day and ruins the cover maybe there's a big cover-up going on like uh i'm gonna use one sad faces series now um it's just high school and um with her and this one uh it's not really a spoiler because it's mentioned in like the first episode but um okay so luke and guy and their mother move into a house after their father gets in jail and um luke is like he's not really that good of a kid right and um apparently what he did for them to move and like be shamed was not for the father to go to jail this is the big cover-up is that he went and he beat on a teacher 
for the father going to jail because the father was a drunk driver and he killed uh, two people's parents who were other characters' parents. And um, they went, see, there's already a connection going. They went, and um, the guy went to jail, but uh, one of the teachers made an offhand remark in Luke's old school. And uh, Luke went and apparently made him look like he had been hit by a drunk driver with a couple of his friends. These friends crop up about like um, halfway through the actual series and uh, just totally blow everything for him. Like he had life pretty much normal esque, except for his home life, which totally sucked. But um, it, it was okay for a while. And then they show up and ruin everything. It's just, it's, it, for, for me, that was just like the crowning moment of plot lining awesome. As you can see, I'm using a lot of TV Tropes references. Uh, TV Tropes is a great website for this kind of stuff. Um, okay. So, those are a couple examples of different conflicts. And I, you can have them more than just between two people. You can have them between two groups of people. A person and in an institution. A person and a town. A person and in their inner beliefs. Like, person versus themselves. I'm sure you've went over this in English class, and if you haven't, because there are some younger players who have not, like, been to, like, say, grade 9 yet, um, or they just weren't paying attention, getting stoned in the parking lot. You never know. Just, just saying. Um, what happens is that a character needs to have a conflict in order for them to develop, and it brings out their character traits, which I said before where the bad traits and the good traits, they're going to have quite the time with them. And um, so say like a person, they're friendly, but they're very judgmental. This can prove a problem because they can shoot their mouth off. Or maybe they keep these to themselves, but just like tell their other friend and their friend goes and tells and there's a huge rumor chain started. Like, like it can go so far. Like, it's, it's just, it's perfect when you set up the character traits because you can do so much with them. But then there's a fine line, because how much tribulation is too much tribulation? For those of you who don't know what tribulation means, it's like, um, you know, like problems, issues, trials, stuff like that. How much is too much? <laughs> it really, it all depends. Um, I would say go with, well, my favorite plot line is, a. Uh, Four lines, no waiting, which is, um, on TV tropes, this is how they describe it. It's, um, plot A starts, and midway through plot A, plot B starts. Midway through plot B, plot A is resolved, and plot C starts. Midway through plot C, plot B is resolved, and plot D starts. And then it just, it goes on from there. So it would kind of be like an arc, where in the middle of every arc, a new arc starts. And... That way, you kind of have a continuous problem flow, but don't make it like, bam, someone dies, bam, someone gets by, hit, hit by a car, bam, someone's in a coma, because the coma rate isn't really that high. Try to make things realistic. Um, <laughs> and I'm just like speaking for a couple of people who have had like a bazillion comas. I mean, like, uh, Mark in California High has had like... four. <laughs> um, that's a bit much. But um, I'm using him because I know he won't hurt me for giving him as an example. But uh, yeah, how about that? Um, don't give too many tribulations to one character. Don't like, um, you know, like, don't have the character be totally overloaded with problems unless it's part of the plot line. And that's probably the thing with everything is that do everything sort of in the way that I kind of describe it for writing, if you're kind of stuck, because it does help. But if your plotline interferes with anything I say, then feel free to just like write around that. You know, like I'm not the definitive end period end of discussion on this. This is just a good starting guide because this is what I give people when they ask me for help. Um, I'm going to provide a character sheet in the description for you guys. Uh, it's just whenever you want to create a character, these are what you should be filling out. 
And then uh, feel free to ask questions and bring up a discussion. I would love to hear your disagreements. I would love to hear um, any sort of things that you're stuck on because I can help you elaborate on that. Uh, I Again, I don't claim to be an expert. <laughs> I really hope I don't get flamed over this. Uh, I just, I want to start a discussion over this, over, um, you know, like plot lines. I want to get some good creative juices flowing in this community because we seem to be stuck in a bit of a rut. And there are very good original series. And I'm glad, I'm an advocate for hat kids as long as they're clean. And I'm, I'm glad to see them back clean as ever. Um, there's no very raunchy stuff lately that I've seen. Um, it's good, it's good. Um, so yeah, everything you're going to need to know is in the description. If you have any questions, comment, or if you're really shy, private message me. I reply to every message I get. And again, please don't like flame me over this or anything. It's not really worth it. 